Hi everyone, today we are talking about battery degradation. You want to know what's the degradation on your car. You want to know if you should buy this vehicle right here. Now, one of you, and you will recognize who you are, suggested a fantastic idea a couple of months back. And that idea is to crowdsource the state of health of various Ionic 28 kilowatt hours because a number of you viewers you do have an Ionic 28. So how would we go about that? Well we'll do three parts today. Number one, how to measure the usable battery capacity. So I'll give you some instructions. Number two, I'm going to give you a sense of what the results should look like looking at just the one car but over a period of time. And then number three, we'll talk about how you can submit your own result of your own experiment and I will aggregate those results together to come back to you with a new video. So first, how would you go about assessing how much energy is deliverable by your battery? One of the classic methods is simply to charge to 100%, then drive it down and look at how much distance you've traveled and what was the efficiency. Now, for this particular car, it really works because we know that the meters are giving you the exact information. So that gives you a good sense of all combined how much energy you've discharged for driving, for heating the car and literally anything else. For the instructions now, first, you're gonna charge to 100%. Then you're going to reset both the meter for efficiency or economy, as well as the trip meter, how much distance you've driven. So all of that should be reset to zero. Then you're going to be driving. It doesn't really matter what kind of driving you do, whether you're efficient or not efficient, you just drive. Now it would be a lot better if you could do it all in one day because otherwise you do have these zombie losses and other things that may come into play. It'd be fantastic if you could drive from 100% to whatever you're comfortable with, maybe 20%, maybe 15%, maybe 10%. Some might want to go down to 5%, but do it preferably on the same day and not too long after the battery was charged in the first place. So if you're charged overnight, it's perfect. Once you're done with your drive, we're going to make a note of a number of things. Number one, the distance traveled on this trip. Then how much of the battery is left? What was your fuel economy? And it will be important to make clear whether it's what hours per kilometer or miles per kilowatt hours or anything else. Then the total car mileage, because the whole point is to understand which cars are older and are more degraded versus those that are maybe newer, have less mileage and are less degraded. And finally, because temperature matters in this, I think we are going to want the rough outside temperature at the time of the test. So summer versus winter versus Norway winter could make a difference. So there we go, we've got our input. In that case, we've just done a normal drive. We went where we had to, and we're recording the output from that. In this case, 122 miles, going from 100% to 9% on 5.4 miles per kilowatt hours. Calculated energy dispense is gonna be about 22.6 kilowatt hours. However, in this case, we've recorded this over four days because it took us four days to do 120 miles. And therefore there are probably additional losses along the way. So it's not the best measure I could have done. It still gives me a sense. And even that, by the way, if you do the weighted average of what you record on the dash, even that is slightly different. But let's take another example where it's all driven on a single day. We are looking at 85 miles from 100% to 17% at 4.2 miles per kilowatt hours. It was six degrees Celsius outside. 
the calculated energy is about 20.2 kilowatt hours. The miles per kilowatt hours is a very imprecise measure, especially when you're driving at higher speeds because it doesn't give any granularity of information. Now you get it, but third and final example, 91 miles from 100% to 14% at 4.2 miles. And that means a calculated energy of 100 to 14 of 21.7. And if you have the good sense of using the metric system, then you're looking at 146 kilometers at 148 watt hours per kilometer, which is still 21.7 kilowatt hours. So now we have three measures that we can put on a graph energy consumed as a function of the percentage of battery used. And if you do that enough times, you get full curves from 100% to 10%. Here, this is what I've recorded with my car of a time, so I don't really need to manually record all of those things. But in your case, I'd like you to make those measurements and submit them. And that takes us to the third point now, which is how about creating a picture of multiple cars and crowdsource the information. That is what we get on this chart with three cars, car A in green, B in blue and C in orange. The various dots together start plotting out the line, which is your capacity curve as a function of state of charge. You could therefore see the difference between different cars of different ages. So I invite you to measure for yourself and submit your readings. And this is done over here. And I'll include the link in the description. That's it for now. I hope you will participate. Thanks for watching and talk to you soon.